And for more inspiration, we take you now to the story of a young man hoping to change the country one thela at a time. Mohammad Azhar Muhyiddin uses corn waste, so bhutta waste, to create biopolymers, an eco-friendly material that his company, BioReform, uses to create bags that they say are slowly replacing plastic bags in cities across the country. The company claims that their bags are completely biodegradable. In fact, it takes less than 180 days for them to completely turn into soil. And for Azad, who launched a bio reform in 2022, the last few years have been a roller coaster of ups and downs. And we wanted to sort of sit down with him, understand, and also tell us more about uh, this entire material. How is this bag, which looks like plastic, is not plastic, comes out of all these eco-friendly materials and is completely turning into dust as well. Okay, let's go over to him to understand more. Azhar, thank you for joining us on the show. We know we've, we've caught you in your commute, but we just had to ask you how it is that you came about this entire idea. As I tell us, uh, a number of articles say that it's actually a speech by the Prime Minister that gave you the idea that this is the cause you wanted to go behind. I think it was a speech where he was saying he wanted to make India free of single-use plastic all the way back in 2019. Is, is that correct to say that that was the spark? So the... I, I would say the first spark was the zeal to pursue entrepreneurship and to solve problems, which then led to, you know, finding out what world problems that I can solve, found out plastic to be the top three. And then particularly why in India and why single-use plastic was definitely because of that speech that I uh, came uh, across, because then that gave me a bigger picture, ke, okay, boss, this is something, whatever I'm trying to do, is something that is really a very big problem because the Prime Minister is addressing it. So yeah, it kind of gave me a boost to, you know, think, hey, yes, I'm thinking in the right direction. Definitely the right direction. This is on top of everybody's mind these days, especially the younger folks, uh, you know, watching us right now. But tell us more about this material. What exactly is it made of and how exactly do you guarantee that in 180 days it will turn into dust? Okay, so uh, very basic. I mean, we have we have conducted so many sessions with school children also. So I think uh, my my words will be understandable for across all your audiences. Uh, so basically, what we do is we manufacture bags that are made out of cornstarch, and uh, there is a material called bio. So plastic comes from uh, crude oil, um, like comes from crude oil basically, right? It's a uh, byproduct of oil. Hmm. Similarly, uh, these hmm. the kind of bags that we make, they are a product of corn starch. Since corn is renewable, uh, it, it comes from the green uh, background, we call it green, green, green energy. It's a biopolymer. So we use these, hmm. corn, and corn starch hmm. is nothing new. Corn starch has been used by our moms for, for a lot of cooking recipes. It has been used in a lot of uh, cosmetic products by the pharma industry. So cornstarch is one of the components. The other component mm. is other starches like cassava starch, tropical starch, starch basically. And mm. uh, it's hundred percent biodegradable. It is compostable. Uh, that means plastic remains uh, back in the earth for like five hundred years, a thousand years, right? It it just stays there forever. Whereas our bags, after you use it, once you discard it, in less than six months, it it will de uh, get degraded completely, and it will not turn into microplastic. Rather, it will turn into a compost, which is again uh, enrichment to the soil. That's what we do. But uh, Azhar, just hmm. tell us, there already are options out in the market. Jute is a common one. There are, are there are other alternatives. Paper bags are a thing. Why create a new material altogether? So there were two primary problems with the existing uh, alternatives to plastic. Uh, see, countries, uh, the mm. first world countries like US, uh, Canada, and a lot of other European countries banned plastic two decades ago, right? But still, they are not able to tackle the plastic problem. And there are two reasons for that. Yes, awareness campaigns, yes, protest, yes, government bans are there. It's good. But unless we don't have an alternative, there is no way to go. Now, alternatives which were existing, like paper or cloth, they have their own challenges. For example, let's say paper bags. Paper bags are not water resistant. Mm. Now, since paper bags are not water resistant, its usage is very limited now. You cannot use it for so many use cases. You cannot use it in refrigerators or to pack liquid items or to pack uh, food items directly, poultry or dairy. A lot of use cases. So it, it 
short of a lot of use cases. And then once we come to jute bags or other uh, bags like cloth or non-woven, these bags are really very expensive. So these two problems, one is the properties, honestly, because plastic has a lot of good properties actually. And that is the reason plastic got so popular. Now we need we needed to find a material which is which has all the good properties that plastic has, should be cheaper than paper and cloth, and also be environment friendly. Mm-hmm. That was the challenge. And that's what we do. We have all the property good properties that plastic has, like water resistant, thermal durable, uh, packaging of you know uh, hot items, cold items, liquid, solid, everything you can add. And it is very less in density and it can carry a lot of weight. One of the advantages that plastic has is it's very like very less in weight, right? Two or three gram ka bag rata hai, but it can carry uh, three kgs, four kgs of weight. Same thing in our bags. Uh, it's tear resistant and like paper bags, paper bags are not tear resistant. So all of those good properties provided with uh, 40% cheaper than paper and cloth bag, also environment friendly. Right, but let's talk about cost a little more, Azhar. Your bags, uh, the ones that come from Bio Reform, they cost about 190 per kilogram compared to, say, a plastic bag, which would be 130. Of course, uh, they're cheaper still than paper and uh, the rest of the alternatives. But how is the market taking it? In the beginning, it was a roadblock, definitely. But after July 2023, when the 120 micron thickness uh, rule came in India, now all the plastics which are less than 120 micron thickness are banned in India. That gives us a very competitive advantage because now if the, if let's say a small size plastic bag, let's say 10 into 12 inches, small size carry bag plastic, uh, you need not to keep 120 micron thickness for it to carry, uh, you know, one or two kgs of weight. But since it's a regulation, that's why you need to keep the thickness like this. So it is 130 rupees kg, no doubt. But because of the increased uh, thickness, let's say in 130 rupees in one kg in a medium size bag, you are getting roughly 41 or 42 pieces. In the same size, ours is 190 rupees per kg, but you will get 75 to 80 pieces in a kg. So that's how we are equal to plastic, not per kg, but when you actually break down the price from price per piece, that's that's uh, where our competition is. Tell us, uh, sir, how has the hmm. market taken to this? I just mean, have you had challenges with customers? You know, when people come up to you, have there been issues that they've highlighted about the the cornstarch bags that you're making? Yeah, so every customer comes with a new challenge, most of them. Uh, but um, here I would like to highlight the first experience that uh, that I encountered. I mean, the first time when we set up our, you know, factory, everything is done, all the inauguration is done, everybody is happy. But when I wake up the next day, I know that I have, I need to do sale to, you know, meet my monthly expenses because it's a factory. A lot of uh, fixed costs were involved. So then my first experience with a customer who is still our customer and he was our first customer. So the experience with him was uh, when we started, our price was at least 3x the price of plastic. Because that time this 120 micron limit was not there. We had, we don't, we didn't have the advantage of, you know, economies of scale. When you manufacture at scale, your price comes down. All of those uh, things were not there. And we were procuring the raw metals from third party or fourth party. So our prices were really high. Uh, the price was a challenge. And then, but regardless of the price challenge and all of that, that uh, guy, that owner of Mr. Paddy restaurant was humble enough to, you know, give me a chance. He said, uh, boss, I'm just giving you a chance because I see passion in you. Uh, otherwise, numbers are not making any sense to me. But then once I uh, took the challenge, once I told him, Kate, okay, thank you for giving me the option, opportunity. Now I'll prove myself. But once I started proving myself, uh, it went all wrong. I mean, even I had no experience in manufacturing, right? So they ordered some sizes. We did some size. Uh, they wanted with printing. The printing went off. Uh, at end of the day, when he saw the product, he was like, this is what, this is not what I expected. Then he gave us a second chance. Second chance, maybe something bad happened. The handle started uh, breaking up apart. The print was uh, going off. He then gave me a third chance. He said, bhai, chalo, ek aur chance deta tumko. third or fourth matlab, uh, wale chance, mein, phir wo slowly we started learning. And then finally, I was able to deliver him the you know best uh, output. And then I got his bulk order. So that was my first experience. Right. But are there more like Mr. Paddy? Are there more people in the market who are ready to give you 
a young passionate boy who's doing some really good stuff for the environment a chance just give us a sense of your customer base So today, as of today, we are doing roughly uh, six, uh, five thousand to six thousand kgs of uh, plastic replacement every single month. That is roughly three lakh to four lakh packs. Uh, businesses number-wise, I think we are dealing with thirty-five uh, to forty B two B clients. Yeah, roughly four lakh bags a month is what uh, we are doing. Can we ask you, Azhar, before we let you go, because we've asked you about the structure of your business, the numbers, but it, we want to ask you a little bit more about you. Who has, if there's anyone out there, a big celebrity, a business inspiration, maybe someone in your own friend circle, who's inspired you to go on this journey? Yeah, so a personal motivation, I would say, uh, I'm a first generation entrepreneur. So my dad is a uh, civil engineer; he's an employee. My grandfather. My forefathers, everybody was an employee. So, seeing my dad, I mean, during COVID, what happened is my dad got COVID, and he he does not live in India; he lives abroad. So, there was nobody to kind of take care of him. Uh, even in the time of COVID, he was all alone. COVID me, he used to get up, cook food for himself, go to the hospital, driving all by himself, because we all know that, right? Nobody was even willing to come close to anybody, right? अब किसी को COVID होके है तो कोई बाहर से आदमी आके आपको hospital लेके जाना होता expect आप कर नहीं सकते थे। Ambulances थे busy रहते थे या एक बार बुला सकते आप ambulance emergency case में बुला सकते। But for recheckups and all of that you cannot keep calling ambulance बार बार। तो my dad literally used to cook all by himself, take his medicine all by himself। वैसे हालत में मतलब and whenever we used to do a video call uh he was he used to you know uh, keep on coughing and all of that and he used to pretend uh, that he is okay and it's just thoda hua beta zyada nahi hua covid bol to bahut zyada nahi hua mere ko thoda sa hua aisa jo bolte the so uh, a personal motivation comes in ki boss i need to do something very urgently very quickly uh, make enough money to get that back to india uh, and kind of make him retire sit at home relax bolke uh, that's what i'm still trying been two years but Now I can see that from day one. Say, if I ask compare, I am lot uh, much closer to that. Probably in the next six to nine months, it it will happen. Is what I feel. So that's a per- personal motivation to retire, my as soon as possible. Azhar, thank you, and thank you for sharing your story. We hope you get your goal, as you said, a little quicker than even you have it planned. This is such an inspiring idea. So, now I think for both of us too, this has been such an inspiring morning just to hear uh, the idea itself, how he's built it out into an entire company, and the challenges he's faced along the way. Hmm. Yeah. And I think you know there are so many brands like these that are out in the market. Some say that it is going to turn into dust, completely biodegradable, 140 days. A couple of days ago, we spoke with someone who made a plastic-like material that would dissolve in water. So there are so many ideas out there. The challenge in front of all these entrepreneurs is how to scale it up. Just a glimpse of it is what you saw in Azhar's testimony as well. Until the time that doesn't happen, we're not really going to be able to solve these problems, and these entrepreneurs are not going to make money. So that is where the next focus really has to lie. But enough about that.